Hi folks, and welcome to Dwarf Fortress. Today we will be starting a fortress with a special purpose. We will be capturing, taming and breeding rocks. A bird of prey so large and ferocious it dwarfs many dragons. We have generated a world already, the Autumnal Continent. It took 9 attempts, but we have found an embarked location with a breeding set of rocks. We were looking to find a pair of rocks, we have instead found a nest site with six of these mighty beasts. The world also has several other features that we're looking to find. There are civilizations of elves, dwarfs, men and goblins, all still alive. The dwarven civilizations are in a weak position, with a relatively small population. With elves and men doing better, though not by much. Whilst the goblins have a very strong position, with a huge population and dominion over large parts of this world. Our home civilization is the Permanent Paper, the last remaining dwarven civilization on the autumnal continent that still holds lands. We will be establishing an outpost in the Horn of Fame Mountains on the edge of the familial jungle on the northwest edge of the kingdom. This will give us access to plenty of trees, jungle vegetation and animals, as well as having a small brook, some fertile soil and some deep metal. The area's climate is scorching hot. We are also extremely close to a goblin outpost. Prior to our start here, I identified the map tile which is home to the nest of rocks. Ideally, we want this nest to be on the corner of our 4x4 embark area. If we were to start directly on top of their lair, they would likely kill the entire party the instant we unpaused. Mega beasts are famously aggressive. We will be preparing for our journey carefully. Firstly, we need a leader for a group of dwarfs, who will also have some skill in appraisal and negotiation to help with trade. We will be bringing three dwarfs with some skill in animal training. Ultimately, we can embark without any skills assigned and still prosper. But by assigning skill points here, the dwarfs we bring will be naturally inclined towards these roles, affecting their personalities, guild affiliations and preference for worship. So our trader and leader should be a dwarf with inherent leadership qualities, which will pay off as our settlement grows. And importantly, the three dwarfs with animal training skills will ensure that we have several dwarfs with suitable personalities for taming and working with animals. As we fill our wagon, we get an impression of the material wealth available to our home civilization. Notably, our homeland has no iron tools for us. We do have access to bronze, which can hold a decent edge, and though we have some steel items available, it's likely to be coming to our homeland via trade with the human nations. Definitely an indicator of a struggling dwarf kingdom.
We will be bringing some cats and dogs along with us. We will also have the two pack animals that will pull our wagon on the journey to our new home. These animals should prove useful. By way of supplies we will be bringing three bronze pickaxes, a steel anvil, some seeds for the dwarven crops, a small selection of dwarven drinks, and some meat. A silver battle axe, which is no better at cutting down trees or foes than other axes, though some of the more superstitious dwarfs appreciate having a weapon of fine silver along with them. And finally, we will be bringing eight copper cages for setting up our cage traps. When preparing our wagon's inventory, we could choose some of the cheaper items, which would allow us to bring more items. However, the more items we bring, the longer it will take us to move the stocks to somewhere safe. So we've instead chosen to bring less equipment of better materials. Our group of dwarfs have decided on the name Zustashtatan, the Ancient Irons. It is a strong name for those brave enough to tame the mighty rock. Our fortress will be named Fersodel, Beast Shield. Now, we don't have to specify the names and symbols of our group. However, in this instance, the ambition of our enterprise is clear, so we will take the time to find a name that fits us. And so, we definitely want our group symbol to show a rock slaying goblins. We believe that one day this will be how our world is saved. For now, it is a symbol of hope. The symbol of her fortress will be Tora Skubuk, the greatest lance. This is an image of a rock and goblins. The rock is devouring the goblins. It pleases our dwarves to think that if they are successful in their task of taming and breeding the legendary rock, these mighty beasts will be both shield and lance in protecting our civilization from the goblin menace. And so prepared, we embark. You have arrived. After a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond, your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all of Erlominum. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labour comes sustenance. Whether by bolt, plough or hook, provide for your dwarfs. You are expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you, but it is spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings ere the tigers get hungry. A new chapter of Dwarven history begins here at this place. Versatile. Beast shield. Strike the earth. As the dwarven caravan reaches the site of our new fortress, we locate Slau Stusta, Crabstrap, the lair which brought us to this place. And the lair is currently home to six rocks. During their time here, many adventurers have tried to slay them. The remains and what was once their belongings now litter the area around this nesting site. Scattered around the nest we can see various corpses, items of clothing, and a large variety of minted coins. Eventually we can collect these, but for now we will leave the items forbidden.
So, our first priority is going to be getting underground quickly. We need to find a safe place where we can hole up with our dwarfs, animals and the goods we brought. The sooner we can empty the wagon below ground the better, as the rocks will not stay put for long. So we assign an area to dig, and assign jobs to our dwarfs. When assigning jobs, we will be using Dwarf Therapist. By using the Optimize feature, our dwarfs will be assigned jobs based around their preferences and personality. This will mean that in the long run, our dwarfs should be happy with the work they do. Oh dear. We have a rogue fisher dwarf. As we begin, one of her dwarfs immediately heads in the wrong direction. This could go badly. We need to tweak the jobs we have assigned. So we remove fishing and hunting to stop any more of her dwarfs straying towards the rock's nest. Here we see a wild pangolin wander too close to the nest. It draws one of the rocks out and it is swiftly killed. As more animals enter our area, the rocks will continue to move out and attack them. This is our burning fuse, the ticking time bomb which will make the surface a very unsafe place to be. We dismantle the wagon that brought us here to prevent anybody gathering around it. We assign some trees to chop down to quickly gather some wood. We quickly placed a carpenter's workshop indoors. We 
we see one of our cats straying too close to the rocks. Again, this could go badly. We will need to restrict our animals underground to keep them from wandering off. Though at least for now it is not being followed as it flees back towards our dwarfs. We will be keeping an eye on the skies. Once we're underground we can relax, but until then this is some healthy paranoia. Another pair of animals are attacked by the rock, thankfully leading it away from our group.
We build doors, beds, and we finish moving our stockpiles below ground. We lock the doors and forbid all passage outside, and we breathe deep. We've managed to get dug in without angering the family of rocks. And from here we can truly get started capturing and taming them. So join us next time in Fersaville, the Dwarf Fortress of Beeshield.